move on. Thank you so much, sir. Let's move on with uh, Dr. Hemant Murthy's case. Yeah, you're able to see my slides? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I continue with my uh, FEVR, I think the number of FEVR cases. So this is a patient with uh, FEVR with tractional macular hole detachment. Uh, this 28-year-old uh, male one-eyed patient, um, the other eye was lost due to PVR. So when the patient presented, I've been seeing this patient for about 10 years now. He was on regular follow-up and we had done a fluorescent angiography. I detected some uh, peripheral neovascularization for which I had done a peripheral laser to all the CNP areas that were there. But then he presented suddenly with a, a drop in vision. So initially, he came to me in uh, February of 2020 with a small foveal detachment. At this time, I warned him that uh, this would probably lead on to a macular hole detachment because we know all tractional uh, macular detachments initially start as a foveal detachment. So I had warned him, but then I think he was out of station. So when he came to me in uh, January of 2021, he came with a macular hole detachment. This is a video of a patient with FEVR with a rare complication of macular hole detachment. The OCT shows a macular hole detachment. You're able to hear? Yes. I started with the cutter, but then I find that it is difficult to separate the membrane from the retina, and I change over to the bimanual dissection. The bimanual dissection is an excellent and an elegant way to separate the membrane from the retina. Here you can see that I'm using the scissors with its plates closed to do a blunt dissection and separate the membrane from the retina without damaging the blood vessels and the retina. After separating it from the disc, I proceed to the periphery. Till the area where I had previously done laser. So one has to be very gentle in dissection to avoid hydrogenic breaks. Then I shaved this, these membranes from the retinal surface using the high-speed cutter and then trimmed the vitreous in the periphery to the extent possible. Following which, I did an ILM peeling under PFCM. The ILM came out in bits and pieces then I supplemented the laser in the periphery. Following which I did a fluid air exchange and then use a tamponade. The post of picture shows an attached retina and the hole was closed. Thank you. So uh, when, you know, after the surgery, uh, post-op under oil because I had to use oil in this patient because he's a one-eyed patient. So I could uh, see that he had improved. The retina was uh, attached and the hole was closed, which was the important thing. And after oil removal, he has gained a six by 36 vision. There is some amount of cataract, which uh, he's scheduled for surgery sometime later. So some of the challenges that we come across is the posterior hyaloid is ad extremely adherent and it doesn't strip off. So one of the ways is to use bimanual and gently separate the uh, uh, vitreous from the retina. And we know that uh, the retina is ischemic in the periphery. And if you develop breaks, they lead on to develop of development of PVR. And it's always very difficult to manage these patients. Behaves very much similar to like any other uh, tractional uh, uh, procedures like uh, ROP or anything where the contraction, once you develop more breaks, it actually, it's very difficult to produce, uh, you know, prevent PVR. 
So I, in my patient, because I had done previously all the laser to the periphery, I did not use a buckle. Otherwise, there's a good reason to put, to put a peripheral buckle because you are never able to clear the vitreous entirely from the periphery. Thank you. Excellent case uh, and excellent outcome. Uh, any thoughts, Gopal? Um, uh, I think, um, you know, it is perfectly done. But even despite that laser, I think I would have considered putting a, uh, you know, buckling element on that side. Yes. That's my thought. Process. I mean, Herman sir only taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with it. I agree. It's, uh, it's always a question. So what I did was... Uh, I ensured that I could remove all the area, all the vitreous up to that lasered area. So I know that now the periphery is attached and uh, I was sure that it's going to settle because I've been following this patient for 10 years. So I think I just left it, but I agree with you. It's always a good to put a peripheral buckle and support it. Yeah, I, I just like to make a quick comment is that, you know, unlike other cases uh, with FEVR and I, 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 I'm I sure our international guests must be thinking there's a spate of uh, FEVR in India. But anyway, uh, what I think is, you know, FEVR can be progressive. If your patient is young, you can still have the attraction developing and, you know, more exudation happening. So it's always, I think, in this particular scenario, a good idea. One, If you're doing the surgery, just put a slip in an encircling band so that it kind of takes care of that, uh, you know, attraction. Another point is uh, with the macular hole here, the traction and the pull temporally is tremendous. So the, the, I've actually done about more than about a decade or so ago, a case uh, of FEVR tra traction macular hole. So uh, I think this is a situation where for me, I would now, you know, do, I, I didn't at that time, but I would do inverse island peeling because I think uh, this is one case which uh, mandates it. There's a lot of traction. So I would do a avoid wide traction, take care of a lot of ILM more than I would usually. Actually, I did try doing an, I actually thought of doing an inverse island peeling, but the ILM just comes out in bits. So it's just impossible to get a good flap over the hole. But it did settle without that. So I thought, yeah, it's good. I think I must have relieved all the traction. That's the only thing. Yes, I, I agree with Dr. Heyman. The ILM doesn't behave well in FEVR. It doesn't behave like it would in any other case. But the flip the positive side of it is that usually these are young patients. And if you have removed a lot of traction, that itself is usually enough to close the hole. The hole closes. But I agree with that point with Dr. Anand is also making that this can still worsen and reopen later on because the temporal traction can never be adequately relieved because it is definitely there. So I've done a case with whole RD, which closed, then attached, then again developed RD, then we did RR because, because the traction was so extreme that the hole reached the edge of RR. So it was so difficult to spare the macular hole and still seal the RR at the same time. So it's a continuous progressive battle with FEVR. Continuous. Also, additionally, you're, uh, especially if you have a lot of neovascular, you didn't have a lot of neovascularization, but if you do have a lot oh. of peripheral and temporal neovascularization, you're going to be ending up like I did, put a lot of uh, uh, laser. That laser will further induce uh, traction. So that, that's another double whammy. That's, there. That was one reason why I decided. I said, yeah, I think it's so stable. I think I'd do it. Now it's about a year and he's very stable. So let's see. Keeping my fingers crossed. You've done a good vitrectomy, so that should help. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.